Hi, I'm Jess. I'm a PhD candidate here at the Red Path Museum at McGill University. Bonjour, je m'appelle Julien Turk. Je suis un étudiant en quatrième année ici à McGill en biologie. Hi, um, I'm Jennifer and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a biology major at McGill University and I'm in my third year. Hello, uh, my name is Robert Heschler and I'm a master's student in the Department of Biology here at McGill University. Hi, so my name is Victoria Glynn and I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Biology. Yeah, so essentially I chose a biology major because I didn't really know what I wanted to do specifically in the life sciences. Um, and so the bio major kind of allowed me to test the waters in a bunch of different fields. That's kind of what's so great about the, the program is that it's so interdisciplinary by nature. But then I eventually honed in on what I'm kind of focusing my research on now. Um, so, you know, in that regard, bio has been great in kind of shaping my interests and getting me to kind of really hone in on what I, what I really want to kind of pursue in the future. I kind of had this realization in CJEP and I just loved organismal biology and then biology was also is also a great major because it's so open so if you do decide to get into med you can still go. Uh, after high school I went out to Vancouver to do my undergrad at the University of British Columbia and while out there I fell in love with with the ocean and um, with marine biodiversities with fish with aquatic invertebrates um, so because of those interests, I then decided to pursue my master's at McGill. When I was in high school, I took an environmental science, AP environmental science. It was actually the first AP course in my school. And immediately after taking it, I said, wow, I think this is what I want to focus on, like moving forward. Um, I'm really lucky that my upbringing was that I got to play a lot outside and play in the mud and kind of explore there. So I spent my childhood flipping over rocks and logs and a lot of those animals were reptiles and amphibians. So things like turtles and frogs and snakes and toads. So I became really interested in those animals and I really wanted to know more about them. I wanted to help protect them. So that kind of is what drew me into biology. As part of my research in this lab, I actually got to go to the Philippines uh, and there we were looking at how, how the um, invertebrate communities of coral reefs, how they will potentially change due to climate change. We got to go diving three times a day and we were diving over these coral reef communities and basically looking at what animals are there and then we were comparing them to other corals. I became really interested um, in in doing this biomonitoring of aquatic ecosystems. So my first experience in the lab actually started in second year. Um, that's when I was hired as a lab assistant by uh, one of the lab managers in the Bellini building. And so I started off doing yeast dissections for uh, Professor Jackie Vogel's lab. Um, and in doing so, because my boss himself, Dr. Ziad El Haj, was kind of managing two labs, I got to also get some exposure over at the Reyes lab since they were working with yeast too. Following that kind of first experience in the lab in Bellini, uh, I knew that I wanted to get my hands on my own research project, and that's when I applied for the Sura Award um, with the help of Professor Tomoko Oyama. And so during the summer of 2021, I was able to do some research with her lab and with her help. Um, and that was really kind of my first exposure to what scientific research looked like. It actually wasn't until I was in my um, my minor of my undergrad. So my major in my undergrad was biology. In my minor, I actually came here to the Red Path Museum. It's where I studied and it's where I met my current professor and everything. And I was like, oh, this is my home. <laughs> I fit in here. This works. So I kind of latched onto that. I did an undergraduate research project with my current supervisor, um, Dr. David Green, on toads. And I basically was trying to raise toad tadpoles to not die. So I was trying to make it so these endangered tadpoles could survive in these mesocosms, so these artificial ponds basically that we had for them. Ooh, and so I'm really excited now that I get to find that out as part of my research and also raise these endangered tadpoles for release, which is a really important part of conservation and something really close to my heart. My project specifically is on crayfish behavior. So I'm part of the Ricciardi lab, Tony Ricciardi, and they, that lab focuses on more on evasion ecology, specifically in the Great Lakes. Um, I have these two crayfish populations, and so since they have such drastic, um, different environmental histories, we thought, what if these environmental histories um, change how they eat? Um, so I study the Fowler's toad. It is an endangered species in Long Point, Ontario. It's only in three places in Canada. Long Point is one of them. 
Um, I also study American toads, which are a more common species. We have them right here in Montreal. And I look at their tadpoles and how their tadpoles affect the environment. So I'm broadly interested in understanding how aquatic ecosystems and how aquatic biodiversity will respond to climate change in the future. So for my master's research, I was focused on developing this molecular and genetic tool where we can sample water from lakes, oceans, streams, and we can collect all of the genetic material that's been released by the fish and the invertebrates into the water. So I'm currently pursuing my PhD at McGill in the Neotropical Environment Option. And what's really wonderful about this program is that I'm directly partnered with the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute down here in Panama. So my research focuses on the different strategies that corals engage in uh, to cope uh, with environmental stress. And here in Panama, the dominant coral species in the tropical eastern Pacific, which is where my study sites are, is known as cauliflower coral, and they experience some of the most drastic environmental heterogeneity of probably all reef sites globally, given that we have an upwelling regime here. So, so those two first experiences were really great at like kind of getting my base in molecular biology. Um, and then I kind of at that point, after my summer of research professor Oyama, I decided that I wanted to do something a little bit more tangible. Um, and that's when I was lucky enough to get an independent research project with the Early Drug Discovery Unit at the Montreal Neurological Institute. So that's where I'm working right now and my project's kind of ongoing. Just to kind of briefly talk about my project at the Neuro, I'm working with um, iPSCs, so induced pluripotent stem cells. Um, and essentially those are just stem cells that we get by reprogramming mature cells back into a stem cell state. So it's really cool technology because we can then, you know, grow neurons in a lab from a blood sample of a patient that has something like autism or Alzheimer's, for example. That's been a really cool experience and it kind of um, allowed me to see how, how scientists can kind of juggle between academics and industry as well to kind of create um, projects that, that kind of border those two, those two disciplines. Les conseils que moi je donnerais à des étudiants qui rentrent à McGill, ça serait de garder un esprit ouvert, euh, d'être euh, euh, réceptif à de nouvelles expériences parce que tu, tu vas en vivre beaucoup. Quand j'ai eu ma, premier, euh, ma première opportunité de travailler dans un laboratoire, c'est vraiment dans un domaine que je n'étais pas trop familier, mais j'ai pu vraiment apprendre beaucoup. Donc je pense que c'est vraiment ça, de garder votre tête haute le plus que possible parce que c'est sûr que ça va être difficile dans des moments. Euh, mais aussi juste essayer de ton mieux de garder un esprit qui est ouvert, euh, mais réceptif à de nouvelles expériences. Find your community in your niche, in your people. I found that in the Red Path Museum. Um, there's lots of really great clubs on campus where you could find it. Maybe you'll find it in your department. It really depends. Finding those people around you who share that goal is really motivating. So highly encourage you to join some clubs, find some extracurriculars, and really find that community for yourself. Um, so you're welcome here. I welcome you here. Um, and I hope you find your community and join us.